so many five star reads in this pile i'm so happy i'm so happy about my august reads and this is my wrap up for august <music> living in Germany who loves reading books. I read mostly English books but once in a while of course I read books in German. I also have a podcast that I host with my co-host uh, Lily. Uh, you can click on the I think down in the description bar uh, you'll find details for the podcast where we talk about books and uh, we do interviews with different amazing black people living in Germany and also overseas who we have met. Um, yeah, we both love books. We rumble about books and we talk to people about books. So give it a listen. I'm also on, we're also on, on social media. You can follow us on TikTok and on Instagram where we share more day to day. Our reads, our activities that we do. Uh, and uh, I'm also on Goodreads where you can read where I do like reviews about books that I've read so that's a long, a long introduction follow follow us everywhere follow me everywhere and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video I have so many other videos that you can watch and yeah if you're uh, a returning watcher <laughs> welcome back I'm glad to have you here so this, these are the books, the physical copies of books that I read in August. August was an amazing, an amazing reading month for me. So many five-star reads. And I think one of the reasons why uh, I felt like August was good to me was because I was on holiday. I had, I believe, a week off in July and a week off in August. So just having time, I've realized that when I... Of course, when I don't have time, then I end up rushing and um, I make bad choices. I pick up bad books, <laughs> not bad books, but books that don't align with me. And uh, I feel like August, because I knew I would be having time off, I curated my uh, reading, my TBR list. And I'm so happy with the books that I read because uh, there were so many good reads. So... A lot of rambling let me start number one uh, unfortunately this is Maru uh, by Bessie Head uh, first of all I picked this book up because it was I'm part of a patreon book club and this was the book that you are reading that month so that's why I picked it up I didn't even know who Bessie Head was unfortunately so it was just it just shows the the advantages of the positive positive side of being in a book club because you get introduced to so many new authors uh, so Bessie Head was um, a South African author uh, she was born in 1937 and passed away in 1986 and she's hailed as one of the biggest or one of the most renowned uh, black African authors women or female authors and um, of course writing she she was writing during the apartheid 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 uh time um in south africa and she spoke about it she spoke against apartheid and of course if you speak against uh, such oppressive regimes of course they you have to go into exile because they target you so she went into exile she moved to botswana so i think that's one of the things that inspired her to write this book and in this book we follow uh, the main character is called Margaret and she's uh, born to one of the I would say indigenous tribes in Botswana and um, they're called the Samarwa or Sa I think Samarwa I'm not wrong. Masarwa, sorry. Masarwa, look at me. Uh, she's a part of the Masarwa tribe uh, and she's adopted because she's found um, lying, like abandoned at birth and she's uh, adopted by a white woman who's also called Margaret. This is narcissism at its, at its worst. How do you name your child 
your own name. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And she was a white woman. So, you, well, so I'm rambling. Uh, the, so she's named after this woman adopted her and named her. And of course, as she raises her, she's not like exposing her to her people. You know, she goes to an almost all white school where she faces a lot of racism as the only black or one of the few black children in that school. Uh, and she's expected to perform well, which surprisingly she does. And then when she turns 18, she goes to school until she becomes a teacher. And then her mother decides to move back to the UK without her. So she's she decides to go to uh, her village the small village where her her people are from and surprisingly when she goes there she experiences even more more i would say more like racism kind of like when you experience negativity uh because of your skin color because she was light so some of the people there were like oh is she colored um and she's an outsider why is she here and in the book, the other character who is Maru, which I'm, I'm surprised because why we are introduced to Maru, but there's also Margaret. I feel like Margaret would have been a better title. Well, there's Maru who is one of the leaders in this village and he has a friend. And they, when they meet this teacher, when Margaret comes, they both decide to pursue her. They are both, they both fall in love with her. But on this, in the same line, these men are far from good. Uh, his friend is very promiscuous. Um, Maru also has even slaves uh, who are also from the Masaro community. They were not, I don't know, if given the choice between the two men, I would, I would have chosen none. Uh, so they have their eyes set on this teacher. It, the the book was a lot i know the book is symbolic and especially it talks about really really heavy themes you know like um of course oppression and racial oppression that is done on black people uh and especially in southern africa and then them inter inter internalizing this oppression and passing it to the indigenous communities that are there you know so there's like this caste system whites blacks and then there there's even among the blacks there's even a lower like a, a lower caste um among them so it's it's important it's an important book that i could tell but i just didn't enjoy reading it it was so a, a difficult read for me Maybe that's why I went in expecting fun, a fun read with, of course, important things, but something I could follow. But there was just a lot. There were even animals talking. There was a goat who was talking. Oh. And then I made the mistake that when I ordered the book, I didn't read the details. So, you know, I, I buy most of my books secondhand. And it turned out to it was in German. So, But I pushed through it. I'm proud of myself. I read it and I finished it. Uh, will I read another book by Bessie Head? Definitely, because I've now been introduced to her work. She's an amazing writer, but Maru was just not for me. Um, and it's part of the African Writer Series, so it's it, it's a good addition to my collection. I'm happy to have it. But will I read it again? Mm, I don't think so. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> That was a long description. Second book that I read is um, The Third Life of Grange Copland by Alice Walker. This was uh, the first novel written by Alice Walker. And I remember when I went to Dakar, Senegal, and I visited Angela, who is the owner of Share Alpha Books in Dakar. I asked her which book would she recommend and she recommended this. She said this is the book she recommends to every young woman. So I had to get it to find out. I don't know if I can be categorized as a young woman, but we move. I, I got it better late than never. And uh, the book follows 
like a three it's a multi-generational story so we we are introduced to a man um a black man living in georgia with his family and he works on a on a on a cotton farm and this that's like the the time when racial oppression is really taking place and of course unfortunately like almost always men internalize this racism and who do they oppress the weaker people and those are usually the women and the children so he he was if to his wife um the wife ended up dying uh, in really really sad circumstances and they had a son so he moves to the north because he feels like in the north there might be less racism abandons his son so the son is called brownfield and brownfield decides of course he has to find so, some sort of he has to earn his living so he's 16 and he moves now to to one of the towns there and he gets involved with a woman who runs a pub so he works there and lives there has some sort of relationship with her too uh, which is very weird because this woman was also one of the women that his dad grange copland was having an affair with and then there he, he meets uh, this woman's niece and the niece she's gone to school she's a teacher she can read and at first i was very i was like seeing positivity in this i was like okay brownfield he he's found a good woman um they live happily ever after not really not really it was like the total opposite he was just terrible he was really terrible did some really terrible things and uh, they had kids and then um one of their kids the daughter that's when grange copland comes back uh and he takes over the taking care of the granddaughter his granddaughter now brownfield's child and he sees this as an opportunity for him to change his ways to like atone for what he did because he he abandoned his wife and his child so this is like he's been given a, a third chance to make it right so yeah it was it is a good book a heavy heavy the themes are heavy so trigger warning um i think the whole video will probably have trigger warnings uh because of course there is oppression racial oppression there is misogyny there's misogynoir there is um violence there is there is abuse uh there's so much in this book but something that i loved about alice walker is uh there's a part where she she says how can a family a community a race a nation a world be healthy and strong if one half dominates the other half through threats intimidation and actual acts of violence and i felt like that was one of the themes that was she she really put um like talked about um throughout the book because how if we are to exist in this world um racially racial oppression there's there will there will just not be any movement my kids are home pause alice walker uses this book to remind us of that in a world divided at this moment we can't we can't make any progress I think it's even in the Bible there's a verse that says a house divided can never stand and that's unfortunately how the current world is and when it even starts in the root of our society which is the in a house in a in a relationship in a marriage when two people cannot get along because one person feels like they are stronger than the other they want to dominate the other the other has to submit to them there can be no progress they there can be no peace there can be no progress so i'm just sad that she wrote this back then like over when was this book published 
1970. And we are still having the same, same conversations now. It breaks my heart. Uh, but just like what Angela said, it's a warning. It's a book that also warns, especially young women, uh, who are interested in partnering, uh, especially with men. We have seen in current times, there's been so much so much abuse um, and violence against women. Uh, it's just become so much, so, so much, so many cases. And we have to be careful as women or people living in female bodies. It's, it's a scary time. And also, men also need to do better. But I think it's not upon us as women to, to tell men to do better. We can just decide for ourselves uh, to see who, who, who we invite into our lives and what, what, for what purpose are, are they coming. I am now preaching. It's an amazing book. Uh, please read it. If you're a young woman, if you know any young woman who is interested in partnering, um, give them this book. It's such so much wisdom so much wisdom in it of course i gave it a five star uh, maru um i gave maru i think a three and a half stars uh, then the next book that i read was all my read by sabata here uh, this is a ya book this was one of um our book club picks uh, in a book club that i'm in uh, that really here in hamburg and we had two books, so this was one of the books that you were reading. I generally, I tend not to go for a YA book. So book clubs, like I said, make me choose books that I never would have picked. So in this book, we follow two teenagers, Salahuddin and Noah. Um, Salahuddin is the young, young boy, young man, and uh, Noah is the young woman. And they meet in a small town called Unipa, California, and they are both of Pakistani descent. So they meet when they are really young, uh, I think back in elementary school or something. Um, and of course, they are brought together because they are both from Pakistan. So they, their families get to know each other. Noah is living with her uncle, while Salahuddin lives with his mom and dad the dad is an alcoholic and the mom is trying to run a motel they have they are run they have a motel that she's trying to run but she's also uh sick so we just follow it's a a sad book it's a really really sad book uh, attention attention going to this book ready for just sadness there's just so much sadness there's trauma uh, internalized trauma, generational trauma, migration, the effects, the negative effects that come with migration. Uh, there's racism, there's oppression, there's abuse. There's just everything, everything in this book. And no wonder that the teenagers in this book were just so full of rage, so full of rage. And this rage leads them to make some decisions that, yeah, affect their lives for the, the rest of their lives. It's, it's a book that is, deals with really heavy themes. Um, and I don't know, as I just felt like hugging all these teenagers in this book and telling them everything will be okay, everything will be okay. Uh, but I also understand that they needed to to feel the rage because they needed to find like an outlet for it because otherwise it would have eaten them up just like it ate their parents and uh yeah and their grandparents so there's just a lot of a lot of sadness in this book a lot of sadness i can't believe it that was packed in this book really really heavy theme so trigger warning if you if you want to read this book I don't know, I haven't given it a review, um, a written review, so I'm still working on that. Because for me, because of the themes, it was just so much 
but it's a well-written book um, and and especially for like for young adults yeah and it's won so many awards so yeah would I recommend it uh, yeah go into it just just be prepared for trauma <laughs> Then um, the next book that I read, also another book club pick, uh, I mean another book club, The Hangout Cafe, where we read English, uh, Christian literature. And uh, this is Re Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. And I was brought up in a Catholic home, uh, but we never read Christian literature. I mean, we never even read the Bible a lot. We just read like small, small excerpts. Um, so I um, I think I'm the only person in that group who re ha was reading this book for the first time. And it's set in uh, California in around the 1850s when uh, there was the gold rush time in California. And there we meet a woman called Angel. That's not her real name, but that's the name she goes with. Uh, and she's a woman of the night. She's a prostitute. So we get to know about her life how she ended up where she is um she was born to a woman who was having an affair with a married man and this married man of course broke her heart and um her mom also ended up passing away so she's at age she she ends up being sold into into slavery um into yeah into sexual slavery uh, by the person who was to take care of her, her mom's a boyfriend. And then um, her life just takes a nose deep dive from there because, of course, what do you expect? She's a child, she's eight, year, eight years old, and she's just being exploited and exploited and exploited. Uh, so we meet her when now she's an adult. She's gone into the trade. She's working in one of these uh, brothels. And then there's a man who sees her. She usually take, goes for walks in the evening and a man sees her. He's called Michael Hosea. So this, this story is based on a, a, story, a, a book in the Bible, Hosea. And uh, so it's loosely based on that. But of course, there's the fiction, fictional parts. And this uh, man, Michael Hosea, is a man who loves God, a man after God's heart. And when he sees Angel, God tells him, this is the woman that you're going to marry. This is your wife. So he does everything in his power to, to get Angel, to marry Angel. And of course, we see Angel, Angel is basically a child because she's a grown up, but let's just say from all the, these terrible experiences, the traumatic experiences that she, she had since she was eight, she has never known love. She just, she's, all, she's only known exploitation. She knows that men are just there to use her. So when she meets Hosea, she, of course she doesn't believe anything he says. She, he's talking about God, something foreign to her. Talking about love, uh, she's wondering who can love her. So we follow just these two as they try to build a life together. I enjoyed reading the book. I read it as an, I listened to it on audio and um, I loved the narration. Um, but of course, as any Christian literature book, there's a lot of um, significance that is put on, on marriage. Like marriage is the end all be all. Uh, and if you're married, you'll be happy. Um, those are the parts I didn't really, really care for. But all in all, it was an entertaining book. There's even a film. I've been told there's a film on it. Um, and I think it's on Amazon. So maybe I might find some time to watch it. Uh, I've heard that the film is very good. So if you're looking for a, a Christian literature book um, that talks about redeeming love, the love of God and forgiveness and um finding yourself uh, i would recommend this book the next after reading so many traumatic books i had to get a palate cleanser and uh, that's what when i reached for only for the week by natasha bishop which whose cover i absolutely love 
and it's a story of a young woman called Janelle who we meet her as she's preparing they are traveling to Tulum Mexico for her sister's wedding and her sister is getting married to Janelle's ex-boyfriend I know Messi Messi uh, but it in the end it turns out to be a really a sweet book I enjoyed reading this book because there comes Rome Rome is one of the groomsmen and they've known each other but they've never like been close with one another so now they meet in Tulum and they decide to have a situation ship for just for the week that they are there in in Tulum and it's fun it's they have really amazing chemistry the scenes the spicy scenes are well done um they are emotionally mature I love that about them Rome gave Janelle space when she needed it and was also there for her when when she needed help. There's even a playlist uh, for the different music that is included in the book. I, I love that. And of course, Janelle also had issues with her family, especially her mom. The mom, I didn't like the mom. So she's dealing with her, her mom and of course her sister. There are just some family issues that now in Tulum, uh, really a, like a volcano, they, it just explodes. So she she goes through that in the book. Um, I just, I enjoyed reading it. It was fun and light and, and just what I needed after reading so many traumatic books. And a mature romance book. Like, of course, the characters are young. I think they're around in their 30s, but they, they were so mature in the way they behave. So this was um, an amazing read. Highly, highly recommend it. If you're looking for especially a black, a romance book uh, by a black author. Uh, next is another book club pick. This is We Were Girls Once by Iwanose Odafen. And this was also a book club pick. Um, we had two books uh, because we skipped a month meeting. So we had two books. And this is... Um, like a coming of age story of three girls, or let's just say three women, Ego, Zena, and Erife. It's based in Nigeria, and they were destined to be best friends because their grandmothers met back in the 1940s on a, on a bus going to meet their prospective husband. So their grandmothers were friends, their mothers were friends, so they also became friends. And uh, just because of life, they of course they grow up together they go to school together but then in uni in in university they separate ego ego moves to the uk where she goes to study law and um zinas and erife stay in 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 nigeria in lagos zina ends up uh, going into the acting world uh, she becomes an actress while Erife surprises them by getting married to an um, upcoming politician. So we just followed these three women. I enjoyed reading Ego's part of life because, of course, she's based in the UK. So she talks about dealing with racism and um, or just mis misogyny, misogynoir, and especially in the workplace or a racial oppression in the workplace and she goes on twitter she has like her twitter handle um which is um how do you say it it's not her real name she has a pseudo twitter account which she uses to to talk about things that she's facing in the workplace and then she ends up moving back to nigeria and of course she i found it naive that she was thinking that they could just pick up their friendship from where they left off uh, but she comes home to Nigeria and a lot has changed. There is so much that has changed. Of course, there is corruption, there is, there is family, there is love, there is the weather, all these things that she missed. There is the food, the company. But then she realizes that Nigeria has changed. There is also Nigeria also has like its negative side. So for me, I felt like Ego's story was the strongest. Zina and Erife, mm, I, re I really didn't see their importance in the book. But of course, it was they had to be there because they were three friends. So the author uses these three characters to bring out different 
themes that are happening in in Nigeria even the SARS the end SARS time just around the pandemic time she also weaves that into the book which I liked uh, and we also just learn more about the parents the the girls parents which is um, there's actually a prequel to this book it's called tomorrow I become a woman where um, we are we are told the story of the girls parents their mothers so I might also pick that up. I think I gave this a 3.5 uh, rating. The next a book that I absolutely enjoyed, uh, who, and I've done a, a full video on this book. Uh, I talked about it in the series that I'm doing called The Portrayal of Patriarchy in African Literature. This is a furu by Flora Nwapa, so you can watch it. I, I will link it down in the description box or maybe somewhere here. Uh, so you can just click on it and watch the video. But on, in this book, we follow a woman called Efuru, and Efuru is of the Igbo tribe. Flora Nwapa was, I think, I believe one of the first Nigerian authors to ever be to ever have her books published and um, Flora Enu Efuru is a, a woman who defies a patriarchy, uh, defies societal norms that require her to, to, to prove her worth by being married and having children. And she decides that this is not her way because things just don't go the way they're supposed to go. She gets married and then she has trouble getting pregnant, uh, having children. So she starts getting these dreams. And when she goes to uh, Adibia, I believe a medicine man, he's called Adibia. Um, he tells her that she's been chosen, chosen by the river goddess to, to become one of her worshippers. And when you do, when you, become one of the river goddesses worshippers she blesses you with material wealth so that's what happens and Efuru ends up becoming everything she touches she gets like the Midas touch so everything she touches turns to gold she she becomes successful in her businesses and of course that brings like a causes a rife between her and her husband her hus husband ends up abandoning her um, and uh, we see her just trying to defy society by just leading a life according to her own terms. But we see that even in doing this, still patriarchy holds holds a really has a really stronghold on on women and and their lives and what they are expected to do and how how their worth is measured. So even as she tries to to prove that she can lead another life there's more to life than just being a wife or a mother uh we see her struggling against yeah society her family her her dad her in-laws uh she ends up ma uh, getting married again it's just yeah we see she it's a struggle it's a struggle but i love that Flora Nwapa used a furu to show that, you know, sometimes people think that you can just box African women in one box. Like, we all want the same things. We all, there's just this one path that we are following. But I love that a book published in, uh, let me check. When was this first published? Yeah, a, a book first published in 1966 shows that, yeah, we are different. There are different types of women. We we are not, yeah, we are all different. We, we want different things. And um, we just want to be given, to, to have the permission. Actually, we don't need permission. We can just live our lives the way we want. And... Uh, highly 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 recommend this book 
uh, how can a book written in 1966 still be so relevant in this world that we're living it living in now so it's just about us rejecting what society puts on us and deciding if you want to be child free be child free if you want to have a family have a family it there's no one path uh we, black women african women we are not a monolith uh so highly highly recommend this and then uh, the other book that I read that I don't have the physical copy of my my friend Lily borrowed it was Blessings is Blessings by Chukwe Buka eBay. I will put it somewhere here. It has a beautiful cover, and it's a debut rom debut roman debut novel by uh, Chukwe Buka eBay, uh, which is amazing. A beautiful, beautifully written coming of age story about a young man called Obiafuna. Obiafuna is, um, the story is based in Nigeria and uh, we follow him. He's born in a family. He, he has a brother, a uh, mom and dad. And just from his birth, the mom just knows my son is different. She could tell my son is different. And her, as he grows up, he just doesn't do the things that a typical boy, boy things. He likes dancing. He likes spending time with his mom. He has a really, really close relationship with his mom. And then one day his dad brings a boy. Uh, actually, he's called a boy. This is a boy, uh, a boy from one of the villages where he, his dad went to. So he brings him uh, and he says, yeah, this is a, he's an older boy. So he says, this boy will live with us and he'll help me in my hardware. The dad has a hardware shop. And somehow Obiafuna, even in his young age, he could feel like some sort of a, an attraction to this young boy who's come to his family. And one day, as they are lo alone with this boy, uh, his dad comes home and finds them in a compromising situation and the dad decides to send Obiefuna to seminary. So we follow Obiefuna going to seminary. It's a boarding school, an all boys boarding school. And um, I feel like his dad maybe sensed that Obiefuna was gay um, and uh, wanted to change him or to stop it. Uh, something which is absolutely ridiculous, but that is that is the time that is what is going on in Nigeria at that time and we just follow Obiafuna as he Discovers his sexuality as he's growing up in this really Transphobic not even on a homophobic society uh, where Christianity leads and what is written in the bible is what people go with and of course trigger warning there's um homophobia there is abuse in this book um yeah it's there are heavy themes that are covered in this book but i love the way he wrote it in a sensitive way you read it but you're not it's the the themes are heavy but it doesn't weigh on your heart for me, I didn't feel like they were so heavy in my heart. Uh, and I enjoyed reading it. Uh, later, of course, Obiefuna is much older. He He's now in campus. We see him enter his first real relationship. And he finds his community. Uh, the gay, the queer community in Nigeria at that time. Of course, they are he, they are they are in hiding, but they are there. So I I love that part that he found his community because you cannot exist in hiding forever. You need your community. Everyone needs a community. So I love that the writer brought that into the book. An amazing read, a uh, a book that I, I would highly highly recommend. And um, last but not least is a book that I I read on as an audio book. On Audible, it's called A Broken People's Playlist by Chimeka Garrix. And this is a, a collection of short stories. I 
what can I say? I enjoyed his writing. He's an amazing writer. I mean, anyone who can come up with like 10 stories in one book uh, with ten different characters, um, I enjoyed his his way of writing. What I did not enjoy in this book was the trauma. It was so traumatic. Every story was just from story one until the last one. It was just like like a build up of trauma on top one after another, one after another. I felt it was so heavy for me, so heavy. Um, but the writing is beautiful. I feel like I wish he would have just chosen one of the stories and written a whole book about it instead of it was just oh, so traumatic so if you go if you decide to read this book just be ready but the, his way of writing is beautiful i will definitely get another book by him uh but this one was not for me it was just too much maybe because i read so many heavy themed books in august but it was just like oh thank god i just i read it as an audiobook because i don't think it's a book that i would pick up again because it was just too much for me yeah so those are the books that i read in august i read a total of nine books and some were five star reads some were mid-range uh but i absolutely absolutely enjoyed reading them and yeah please share with me uh, have you read any of these books and uh if you read in uh, it doesn't even matter if you read only one book please share with me which books you recently read in august and yeah i would love to hear your thoughts on them uh, thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video bye bye